Oh, those shirts are getting beat up. I have to go get so some new t-shirts tomorrow. <laughs> yeah! Oh, hello everyone, welcome. I am the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. Let me center myself here. I'm here to talk about pro wrestling. Um, before I do that, finally. Oh, pro wrestling tees. Put up their 20% off sale. I think if you use the code Spring Fling tomorrow, anytime past, just to be on the safe side, 2 p.m. Eastern. I know it's noon central, but then the East Coast, that would make it one. So if I do it at two, it should be there. Oh, that's okay. Uh, but over at Pro Wrestling Tees, they have their Spring Fling 20% off sale. Uh, normally, this is their WrestleMania sales percent off. So, I'm going to get me some Macho Man t-shirts. Finally going to get the one Macho Man t-shirt I've had my eye on for a while. And I'm going to get, only because I just saw it, we have another Macho Man t-shirt, kind of like this, except for it's the Macho Man. It has purples. It's a little bit brighter color than this. This shirt, as you can tell, is getting faded. This actually used to be bright white. I know my hobo shirt's getting beat up a little bit. Eventually, I have to fix that because there's, like, holes in the armpits. That's that's one of my favorite shirts, too. I think it's... Let's see here. My first wrestling shirt was my Macho... Was that my Macho Man t-shirt? Yeah, it was my Macho Man t-shirt. My clothesline wrestling t-shirt. And then I got... My DIY shirt. That's a good one. My Steve here. My, my Friendos t-shirt. 2010 Internet Famous Tag Team. And then... I got my Bullet Club shirt. Because I got that. From Hot Topic, because they had the sale buy two get one free. So I got the uh, Young Bucks t shirt, the One Tough Cupcake t shirt, and I just said, screw it, I'll, I'll, I'll get my Bullet Club t shirt. So that was pretty cool. And then I think also at Pro Wrestling Tees. Got that cunt. Oh, I'm sorry. My ex girlfriend. Leva Bates t shirt. Cherry Bomb. And. Candice LeRae shirt, which is still awesome. Got my sister a Princess Kimberly shirt. I bought my nephews a whole bunch of shirts. I think Villain Club. The Tom uh, Tongaloa. Yeah. Tongaloa Bullet Club Villain Club Johnny Gargano Baseball I don't know I got the OVE shirt I forget what I I forget what other shirts I got I know I got another one oh uh Brock Lesnar maybe that is it I don't know Whatever. All I know is that my Macho Man shirt's still in good shape. My clothesline tees. Clothesline wrestling. Eventually I have to find that parts unknown shirt. That's beginning to bug me. But less more talk about, well, not wrestling yet, but I have to thank some people. Vince's penis. You, sir. Oh, yeah. You're experiencing the Mundo Madness. Yeah. And the mid-card act. You got tossed.
And Tom, you're my tag team partner. And that was it. I think I said something funny and today and I couldn't I didn't on Discord, I think two people responded because well I'll I'll get to that. I think Vince's penis and the midcard act. Uh, I think I put down something about the love child between Johnny Swinger and Rosemary. Rosemary, you don't need Johnny Swinger. I'm single. But that's okay. Uh, so now it's time to get into the main section. What's about some AEW? It starts off with a Jake Roberts promo. Dude, Jake Roberts is a scary man. I don't care what they say. I don't care what he says. It's just scary. And then we have the champion on commentary, which was great. Chris Jericho is doing commentary. Oh, he's so good. Um, the first match of the evening was a good squash match. It was Lance Archer taking on Alan Angels. I think they, they called him. I think they called him like Alan Angles first. I'm trying to get myself centered here. I have to find the, the ruts in the carpet that this chair is normally at. Well, actually, I should use my other chair because that's a little bit higher up. This is, I don't know, this feels funky on my legs. That's okay. That's neither here nor there. Um, for the most part, Archer just ragdolls poor Alan around. Alan tries. He tries to get a couple licks in. He just kind of more so annoys Lance Archer. Uh, then he does that choke slam, choke slam suplex. I didn't even know he could pull off a combination like that. Then he did his blackout, which is like a forward-facing flippy razor's edge. And thank you very much, Alan Angels, for showing up. Because you gave it. You, you at least let Chris Jericho talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling. And it was okay. I like the fact that they are they are building Lance Archer as the monster heel. It is coronavirus time, so he's not drinking water and like spraying people with, with his saliva mixed water. Because <laughs> he's probably the reason why it spreads so fast in Japan. But that's a whole other issue. This match was good. It was a ham sandwich. And then, this blew my mind. Ooh. I didn't know this would happen. But Britt Baker was taking on Hikaru Shida. Oh my goodness gracious golly gee, baby! This was, uh, we got ourselves a good, good wrestling match. Um, first of all, Hikaru Shida. You, you tempting vixen you. I think the one comment I, I couldn't write down the name is quick enough. But dude, you can see like like she likes she likes red lacy panties. And and she likes the the, the full coverage back there. Mainly because oh, there's a lizard up there. I'm like, what the heck's up there? But lizard's on the outside on the screen, that's okay. But I mean you can see that she likes that red lacy stuff for full coverage in the behind part. Mainly because, like, she, she wore her, her, she's been wearing her normal tights, like normal women's tights, not not her like super sexy cutout ones, which I do kind of miss. But like the one was like riding a little bit high, so it showed, showed red lace panties. I'm like, hey, wait a second. Oh, yes, thank you, thank you, Sheeta. And Britt Baker, that's yeah, Britt Baker. Britt Baker got hit in square in the nose. She, she busted her nose. She busted something in her nose. Because that was good. That made, oh, that was so good. Um, Shida, again, very typical in Japanese style. Very strong style. She comes out with the kicks. Uh, Britt Baker does the Famouser. Again, the guns aren't 
Her, are in attendance. They're funny as anything. This is they have to be in attendance to every wrestling show. I think. I think they were in attendance after their match for um, the show I went to up in Jackson. And hopefully all this COVID-19 thing starts to pass on. Because mainly, I'm beginning to get bored. Uh, applied to some jobs. I have two more jobs to apply to. Uh, purchase my two wrestling t-shirts. I have to do some yard work. Go out for the walk. Get some exercise in. I don't make any video tomorrow, which is nice. And then Friday... I just have the video to make. I might go out. I have to see if I can get get, get, get some additional supplies. Yes. Only because oh, Sunday is going to be so glorious. Because it's Easter time. Not only will well, I'll get to that later. Let me get let me get back on track. I get I, I get distracted way too easily when I'm trying to do this. Um. So again, kick. By Hikaru Shida, it's like, oh, I don't know. I mean, she just, she just some weird slides to the barricade. Oh, she sent, um, it was kind of reversal. They were on the outside. Uh, Britt Baker reversed Hikaru Shida's attempt. Hikaru Shida at, ate the barricade. Ouch. And see here. Britt Baker was being held by. Oh, yeah, that's right. By by Danny Jordan. I want to say she's the original mean. I think she's the re original mean girl, Danny Jordan. And that would make sense because if this is out of, because in theory I think this is out of Georgia. And Danny Jordan, the original mean girl, if my memory serves me correctly, which yeah. But if I remember correctly, though, she wrestled for NWA, so that would make sense. So it's not like she's traveling that far. Uh, if you're traveling out of Jacksonville again, it's not that far. It's only, I don't think it's in Atlanta, Georgia. But I know Savannah, Georgia, or St. Simons Island. I forget if it's St. Simons Island or Savannah. I think it's St. Simons Island's only like an hour away from Jacksonville. Savannah, Georgia is pretty close to there. Uh, what? Uh, Vladivostok, and I know I'm pronouncing this wrong. I've been playing too much Metal Gear Solid. Like shooting up a whole bunch of Russians and putting balloons on them. Um, Vladivostok College. I should know. I applied like applied a couple times there to work there. I should know that. I, ooh, I should look there again. More stuff for me to do tomorrow. I don't know. I, I try to keep myself bored, but I keep on finding stuff to do. I guess that's one of the joys about being in a house versus an apartment. Like you get to do stuff around the house. And again, also next week I'll be making another video, 10 things to do while on stay at home. So, uh, Vlad Vast, I know, I think is two hours away from Jacksonville, but it's just right between Jack. I, I want to say, don't quote me on this. I want to say it's right between, on the Florida side of things, Jacksonville and Tallahassee. But Voss is somewhere in the middle. And it's like just north of the border. So, in theory, you could work in, you could live in Florida where you have no state income tax. And then, no, well, that does work. You work in one state, but live in another. I don't think that's ever happened to me. That's weird. I should look. I should. I should ask one day. I'm gonna get sidetracked. Um, then and then Brit. Yeah. So she was gonna help by Danny Jordan. That's the whole reason the original Mean Girl from from NWA. And then I'm like, wait a second. This is fan interference. Why isn't there a DQ? I don't think. That referee knows what they're doing. This is a Pineapple Pete. I don't even know who Pineapple Pete is. Jericho just like shouted his name. And then I don't know what happened. But, oh wait, well in a little bit. Let's see here. So there's a nice vertical. Sheeta has an amazing vertical suplex, by the way. It's a thing of beauty because it's not delayed. She, she gets you straight up there for a second. 
kicks her feet up from underneath her, and then you fall. That looked beautiful. Those are all up attempt by Britt Baker. Just got to switch into a triangle. That's what that move is. Chris Jericho and Tony Schiavone. It's a triangle choke. It's not. It's not a head scissor arm bar. It's a triangle choke because you're because you're using their shoulder and your leg cuts off the blood supply, and and you choke someone that way. Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. That's a blood choke versus a strangulation. Strangulation is when you cut the windpipe. You can do a rear naked strangle. That's when you put your forearm literally across. It may sound like this. Whereas the other way, wrap it around their carotid artery, and it's a blood choke. The, the one leg, like, they, they fight and scream and then, and then get knocked out because there's no oxygen. The other way, they just kind of nod off. Um, so, yeah, so it's a triangle choke. That's what it's called. I don't know. I think there's a fancy judo name for it. That's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu name for it, the triangle choke. Uh, Brits <laughs> stole Adam Cole, baby! <laughs> sling blade. She stole the sling blade from someone. I'll tell you what, it was good. They needed the yay boost for a while, really slow. Um, she had hit the Michinoku driver. Britt Baker kicked out. And then I don't know what happened. She like got kicked in the face because her note, like, blood. It was all this blood coming out of her nose. It's like she did a bad line of coke or something. But she just had this, like, super nosebleed. And I don't even think that was fake. I don't, I don't know how you... Because you can literally see it, like, just drip out of the nose. I mean, unless you, like, put a capsule up there and, like... I guess you could do that. That'd be weird, though. But then you'd have to... I don't know. You'd have this capsule up in your nose. You're trying to breathe. <sighs> uh, snort something up the funky way. We'll just blow it out. I guess I could do that. But yeah, that looked like a legit. Karushita <laughs> doesn't take crap. And Britt Baker, she's known for her shenanigans. Uh, it was Britt Baker and Bree Priestley that shoot went at each other uh, for the first, I think, women's wild. Uh, royal, whatever, whatever it was, their version of the battle royal it had something to do with cards, and like five people came out at a time, depending what suit you drew. And the Joker would show up last, and if you drew, drew like the or something, you were like, like you were there first. It was, it was something weird, but the whole th story is it broke down. Britt did something that she shouldn't do. She pissed off Bree Priestley. So Brie Priestley will shoot one after Britt Baker, and then Britt Baker shoot one after her, and then like some of the backstory is somehow Kylie Ray, smiley, Kylie Ray got involved somehow, and she's like, "Fuck this." <laughs> so I don't know, but again, that is all that's all rumor and innuendo, and internet stuff. So yeah, Britt Baker's. And Hikaru Shida, she has some stiff kicks. I wouldn't piss her off. And then Jericho commented on how uh, Hikaru Shida's boots, they have kind of a toe space. That's pretty cool. I think, like, ninja sh I think. I know there's, I know there's like, the shoe that has spaces for the individual toes. That's, like, weird, though. But yeah, so so this was actually pretty cool. Um, Michinoku driver, uh, Brit Buster knows that which looked good. She did a fisherman's neck breaker. I thought that was gonna be then. I'm like, oh my god, no, I riot. And then the Karushita did a gorilla slam onto Brit Baker on the top rope, hit her with either the the V triggered flying knee or Chinese wizard. The Karushita won this match, but I'll tell you what. This has been the the best women's match out of AEW yet. In fact, yeah, Ooh, yeah, this is a surf and turf match. Yeah, the so cream always rises to the top. That was great. 
Then there was a Kenny and Mike Nakazawa thing backstage. That was funny. They're the almost golden lovers. Uh... So there's a ratings report. Yeah, I kind of followed that a little bit. That's okay. John Moxley and Jake Hagar interview a little bit about the TNT title coming up soon. The tournament started today. Um, and I'm like, wait, where, where's I, 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 Hangman Adam Page? Oh, and Jericho was dropping names all day long. He was talking about Jim Crockett, Abdul the Butcher, Ricky the Dragon the Steamboat. Whoa. So we had the best friends taking on Mike Nakazawa and Kenny Omega. And this was awesome. This is either the uh, Kenny Omega and Michael Nakazawa. They're almost best friends. Or they're the near golden lovers. Or the silver lovers. One of those three names has to be it. Uh, Kenny Omega starts off. Very very traditional wrestling. Arm bar into a headlock. Go off the ropes. Shoulder tackle. Then they switch it around. Trent sends him. Um, does two good looking arm drags. And then Michael Nakazawa comes in. Oh, oh, those Japanese people know how to chop people. And then, of course, he gets the baby oil out. Starts to oil himself up so then when Trent would try the chops, it would just glance off his chest. Like like putting too much Vaseline on. That was funny. Um, then he did that nasty-looking double stomp. And he and Kenny just stomped a mud hole into poor Trent. Uh, then they also did another great move. Michael Nakazawa did the atomic bomb. I like that. That's an old school wrestling move. So he wound up facing Kenny Omega, who did an inverted atomic drum, uh, did something else, and <laughs> then it was like the the, the, the Mongol trail, which is so the setup is Trent is lying with his head facing this way. Yeah. So Michael Nakazawa facing this way. Kenny runs, leapfrogs Michael Na 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 Nakazawa, then forces Michael Nakazawa's head right to Trent's crotch. Oh, so I try to describe it as a oh what is this? yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a it's like a driven headbutt into the groin. Only way I can, only way I can describe it. And then there's more. Um, poor Trent, he was stuck in the corner of Kenny Omega. Michael Zao is outside. He, he of course splits him, pulls his legs between the posts. You know it's gonna hit first, gentlemen. And then he just kept on pulling and pulling. I'm like, oh. That hurts. That hurts me. <laughs> I don't even know. That was a hentai slide on the top rope. Uh, so the set. So the setup for this. Trent gets crotched on the top rope. Yeah. Michael Nakazawa. So he's there holding his balance on the top rope by the turnbuckle. Okay, we've seen that before. Michael Nakazawa takes baby oil. Like that's gonna help anything. To the top rope. Literally drags. The groin of Trent down the rope. Oh, getting rug burn or mat burn or, or any burn on, on that part of the male anatomy is not good. All right, guys? Uh, then, the, <laughs> yeah, Nakamura, he is an unorthodox wrestler, but he's highly entertaining. Uh, the, <laughs> We haven't even gotten to the, the weird parts yet. Then, so the uh, best friends get in the ring. They they double team. Again, which is pretty cool. Um, Orange Cassidy comes in. They have to try for the hug. No, that's not happening. Kenny Omega and Michael Nakazawa want to go for the hug. He just kind of like ducks underneath. He does his social distancing. And... <laughs> And it was like just then Michael Nakazawa was just like squirting, like within I don't know if the referee was like didn't see, but he just squirted baby oil into the eyes of both 
Trent Beretta, that's his last name, and Chuck Chucky e. T or Chuck Taylor. And I'm like, wait a second. There's there's no DQ. And and then of course Orange Cassidy did a dive onto Kenny Omega. I'm like, how is that not a DQ? I want to work, for, dude. You have to do something egregious in AEW to get DQ'd for anything. And then let's see, there was the the the, the heel the, the um there was a drop toe. There was a miscue. Kenny Omega wound up in the corner on the ground. Uh, Michael Nakazawa comes charge again. Gets dropped to hold right to the groin of one Kenny Omega. I hope they're wearing something down there. And then there was the one move into the corner. The Kenny Omega was doing swing double axe handles. Good. And then he did his You Can't Escape, the Snapdragon suplex. All the, all the very typical Kenny, Kenny Omega moves. <laughs> and then... Michael Nakazawa brought up the Venom arm, which I don't know how he does it, but somehow he gets his shock strap off of him, which is an impressive feat, puts it on his hand, and just like shoves it in your face. That's disgusting. And even Jericho. Everyone's making fun of Vince McMahon, especially I think this is Darren uh, Drozovich puke thing. He's going to puke! I'm going to puke! That was just funny. Uh, the jock shot to the face. He did that to both members. Unfortunately, he did it to Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega pick kicks out of a pile driver. Yeah. I I'm not a fan of that. That's The, the pile driver should be... Or, or was it Nakazawa that kicked out of the pile driver? Someone kicked out of a pile driver. That, that pissed me off. I, I did not like that. Then the best friends do their four-way finisher. And it's a four-way hug because they're all good competitors. Minus the pile driver. The pile driver should be like the most lethal move in all of pro wrestling. This was a surf and turf match, though. So, so I can't complain about that. Then there was a Brody Lee promo. Again, more, more digs of Vince McMahon, how he comes out dressing immaculate. Only one member of the of the Dark Orders in a shirt has a gold tie. The other two just look like they look comfy. I think one's in like sweatpants, t-shirt. The other guy's just wearing like jeans and a t-shirt, all black. But but that's fine. That's fine for me. Uh, then we see Britt Baker and her face is all fucked up and bloody. Oh yeah, yeah. She needs her foreheads to. Listen, listen to me, sweetheart, baby. If you really want to make it anyway in this business, baby, you, you ain't big. But but what that means is that you can bleed a lot. So so listen up, sweetheart. Eventually, your forehead has to be on smooth. It has to be cut up like my boy. That's the road because your forehead's too smooth. And if they want to see a dentist, they ain't looking at your forehead. You have so floating the high on Novocaine and laughing gas. They ain't gonna know. They, they've he's sick of your foreheads already. Putting a little, little juice from that forehead. That ain't nothing bad, baby. So then there was Sean Moxley dropping F bombs. Only John Moxley can do that. Then at the Hardy compound, yes, the hole of the ass. <laughs> I don't know how Matt Hardy comes out with this stuff. Instead of calling him an asshole, he's the hole of the ass. That was great. Um, <laughs> and then probably he he called him Jakenstein. If you put two bolts. Uh, on Jake Hager's next, maybe Jake Einstein. And then he called Sama Guevara a false god and probably a fraud Latino. 
Oh, I was laughing so hard. He said something about the pride and powerful. And I didn't even care. But then Vanguard 1 burned the shirt Jerry who gave him the dumpster. So Vanguard communicates through his beeps and whistles. Beep, 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 beep. Boop, boop, boop. Um, that, that it's a dump, no, it's a dumpster fire. And he's like, oh, it's on, it's on fire. It's like, no, it's not. That's, that's my glorious delete shirt. But no, <laughs> Vanguard actually did have a dumpster fire. Uh, seems like somewhere on the Hardy compound, there's a fire pit. And that fire pit, he burned a perfectly nice child size shirt. And this is setting up for the elite delete. Delete, 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 delete. In a couple of more weeks from the Hardy Compound. Yes, yes, brother. No, oh, I wonder. I'll actually, I'll be, I'll, I, I'd, I'd be interested to know. It's like Jeff Hardy is just like, like, if you just see him, not directly, but just like through a window. That would be a right. Just like on um. Oh, that backstage show, like John Moxley, like just like, like it came in the shot as Renee's talking. It's like, they can't show him. It's like, yeah, Renee. Oh, another strike in your book. But so that was funny. Then it was Lee Johnson taking on Brody Lee. This was a squash match. Uh, Lee, Lee Johnson tried to get a quick start. He tried drop kick. Brody Lee just swatted that away. Then after that, that was all poor Lee Johnson did. Uh, got the he hit the big boot, and that drove him out of the ring. And then, and uh, out there, Brody Lee just just went after him, threw him back in the ring. Did like a swanton into the ring. I was impressed. Did the half and half suplex, the spin slam, the discus lariat, pure squash. It was good. It served its purpose. This was another ham sandwich match. Then the last match, it was Sean Spears. It's the quarterfinal already, although it's just the opening. It's actually really just the opening round. It's Sean Spears sitting on Cody Rhodes. And... Oh, Brandy. So hot. She was wearing, like, a little bit longer Daisy Dukes, but she had, like, her, like, like, like tied up t-shirt on. The knee-high fucking knee boots. Cody. Cody's punching above his weight class, folks. Uh, especially because he got that neck tattoo. That's hideous. He tries to cover that up every chance he gets for some reason. Uh, starts off very classic collar elbow tie up into the side headlock. Spears does chops. Eventually throws a chair in the ring. Oh, wait. The referee's going to say, What are you doing? Uh, Jericho in commentary is so great. Even Jericho says, That's, that's, that's an ugly ass tattoo he got on his neck. If he made it, the Canadian flag it might be a little bit better. But that ugly thing Cody got is just... He makes him look like a you know, a stupid idiot. Uh, then there was a lethal in injection by Cody Rhodes. It was a pretty fast-paced match. Uh, the roll-up by Sean Spears a couple times. Cody had a miss... Uh, missed, he missed a moonsault, though. And then the pile driver. Sean Spears hit a pile driver on Cody, and Cody kicked out. Again, that should never happen. The pile driver should be the penultimate move of all of pro wrestling. It's actually legit injured and took out of the business a couple people. Uh, Stone Cold being the most notable one. But if you're into a pile driver, you're 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 sending someone's whole body away. You're compressing the neck. That's no bueno, folks. The pile driver that should just that should just be oh, that's it. Guy's dead. Bring out the stretcher. Fake people. Uh, Sean's, then they go out to the ring. There's a neck breaker outside of the ring. And then he takes out the barricade. He, they even have the cheaper bicycle racks than I thought they did because he just pulled up like the barricade that still had the feet on the ground, took the uh, covering off of it, set, um, set up on the side. And he, and he suplexed for a little bit of back and forth. Uh, Cody Rhodes into the said barricade. And that's a good barricade, because normally the barricades in, in Japan, they bend. This was a quality American steel. 
it did not bend. Because uh, I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Look at you. I haven't done the barricade dance in a while. Uh, Billy Gunn eventually gets involved. He should always he should always be in be in the audience. I don't care what they say. Then the springboard frog splash. That's where Cody brought his knees up. Um, then Sean Spears goes up for a table, and Jericho says, "Yep, you know what? At least this referee's letting them all get away with stuff. Why? Why can't that stupid ref just to say shut up, ref? Like he, you should do what I tell you to do. He was great. Jericho was great the whole time." And then Brainy got up on the top. Uh, Cody with a dive. Pineapple Pete's there holding Sean Spears again. Why, why is no one being disqualified with all this outside interference? All these illegal weapons. The foreign objects being used in the ring. Boo! Stupid. Was it, it was a rough Aubrey, too. I mean, rough Aubrey runs a pretty tight ship. Indeed. Uh, Brandy got on the apron... Yeah, they throws the, the table comes out, and then Cody eats the table. Uh, yeah, was it Sean Spears? I think Cody goes through the table. It was a kick out, and it was a figure four, and he got pinned in the figure four. I have seen that happen before. I want to say it was 2013. The Miz had oh, she's the Miz had. I think Bad News Barrett, Wade Barrett, in the figure four, and Chris Ashley actually got on top and pinned Wade Barrett because he was stuck. And the Miz couldn't get out quick enough. I'll tell you what, again, if they keep on no selling that pile driver, I'm going to be very upset and I'm going to lower my rankings. But for the most part, this was still a surf and turf match. And again, overall, AEW is pretty good. Um, they did what they were supposed to do. I'm kind of upset, you know what? But I can forgive the no selling of the of the pile drivers for now, only for now. But for the most part, this was actually a surf and turf show. I like the fact that they're using wrestlers. At least if they're not wrestling, they're there cheering them on. There's only, I think, like four to six a side, so it's nothing. It's, just, it's not a lot, so that's good. AEW has this formula down, so we'll see how long they can keep this up, though. Because remember, they don't have nearly as much material they could, they could put in a spiller like the WWE does. But that said, the schedule tomorrow, I'm off. Uh, Friday is going to be my review of SmackDown. Saturday I'm off. Sunday, it's Easter Mania. Uh, it's going to be the Daytona Beach Bonfight League special. That's going to be on for Easter. Monday is Raw. Tuesday is a live stream of Impact Wrestling. Wednesday again, AEW. Unless something good happens or my boss says she Get back to work, you son of a bitch. Get back to work. Uh, and then, again, Wednesday, AEW, Thursday, off. Friday, SmackDown. And who knows what's going to happen, because I know the Impact pay-per-views canceled. We'll see what happens, folks. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I do hope I bring a little joy. To, to your stay-at-home life. 